Welcome back guys, thank you for coming back to Interact. I'm offset in Harlem at the WeWork offices sitting down with Javon Collins who is the founder and creator of a financial literacy company called Yoke. Hey man, thanks for driving by. No problem, no problem. I honestly want to thank you because I'm really, and I'm not alone in this, but I'm really trying to figure out as a millennial, you know, how do I restructure the way that my parents have taught me how to think about finances um, and, and really come up with a way that, and strategies and, and things that work for me. I'm um, seeing as I'm someone who's pursuing a career in the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. um, like many of my other friends who are stylists, models, designers, and all that. Um, but it's hard because you want to put all your energy into that at the same time of you still needing to support and fund that. So how do you just suggest in general, before you even get into the nuances of specific career fields, how do you suggest that you start looking at finances? Well, you know what? You have to look at it in terms of a budget. And I hate to say it, no one wants to do it, but you have to budget. Yeah. If you can budget your, your finances, everything else will fall into place. You'll never not be saving, you'll mm -hmm. never not be investing, you'll never not be paying for your expenses or the things that you like to do. Okay, so then budgeting, for example, someone with a part-time job that maybe works mm, 25 to 30 hours a week. Right. How do, you, how do you assess, okay, this is what my budget should look like based on this amount of hours, this amount of income? Okay, so when you're doing a budget, just think of it like this, 50, 20, 30. Okay. 50% of your paycheck goes to your expenses, your rent, transportation, food. 20% okay. goes to your financial obligations like paying off credit card debt, student loans, or just saving in general. Okay. And then 30% goes to anything that you want to do. So like you said, being on a freelance budget, mm -hmm. you your money... So that 30% would go to... Drinking, okay, uh, okay. gym memberships, uh, anything that you want to do. You can okay. spend 30% of your whole entire paycheck on like buying flowers every two weeks. But do you think that for someone, for someone um, in, and specifically within this industry, um, using that 30% would be beneficial to, to say, to go towards that dream that they're chasing? True. That's what that, yeah, that, that's 100% right. Yeah, okay. so as long as your rent is paid for, you're paying your credit card, okay. that 30% goes to whatever you want. It could be funding your dreams or it could be just buying cupcakes. What do you think is the hardest thing about saving for people? Like what's something that um, you find in your workshops that you do with millennials that they're like really struggling with? You know what? I feel they want to save. Millennials do want to save. And as a generation, they save more than past generations, mm -hmm. but they don't know how. Things are expensive, but you just have to allocate what is going to which. So the easiest way to do it is to automate it. You get a paycheck every two weeks mm -hmm. and your taxes are taken out. There's nothing you can do about <sighs> it. Yeah, Imagine if your taxes and your savings was taken out of it. Then you wouldn't have to think about it. You could just live your life. Okay, but then, okay, so for someone like me, for example, I've done, I think I've done this in the past where mm -hmm. I've had maybe five, ten, twenty dollars like taken out of one account every month and shifted to the savings account. But nothing necessarily stops me from, from going, going to the savings there, yeah, and yeah. taking the twenty dollars when I need it. Yeah. So you know what? Here's the argument. You, you're not falling into the 50, 20, 30. Okay. If your rent and your normal expenses are falling outside of that 50, mm -hmm. you're going to be tempted to use your 20% or your mm -hmm. savings. And to, you suggest that you really, you like, really stick gotta, to that. You got to stick to the 50 or else none of it will work. Well, if you, you're 30%. You an adjustment? So like what if you 60 but take 10 from somewhere else? Uh, nah, if you can <laughs> just stay with the 50. See, but you see, but you see what happens, right? Yeah, you yeah, like yeah. In your mind, you start to readjust and think, well, I can take 10 from here, Yeah, from here. I mean, technically you can, but it's just a matter of staying in that pot. If most, in New York City, uh, half the people here spend 50% of their paycheck on rent. So already right. they've fallen outside that pie and right. their savings is non-existent. Right. So you need to just change your pie so you always fall into 50% and you'll mm -hmm. never, never be wrong. Now what about other sources of income? Um, you know, a lot of people have gotten advice or heard vaguely of investing but don't mm -hmm. know what to invest in, what's smart, where do you start? How do you suggest you tackle investing? Investing is very tricky. That's something that we do cover in our workshops. Mm -hmm. We spend about like maybe 30 minutes on it. Really what you should know about investing is how to get involved. Right. You, don't, you, start? Uh, you can start with mutual funds, you can start with ETFs. Those are both two investment vehicles that you can use that are extremely cheap, as cheap as $5, and you can turn into something in the long term. Hmm. Okay, so you, and, okay, so there's definitely a couple brands, um, and I think 
one of them is E-Trade. Right. Um, there are a couple of, of, of those similar companies who, who tell you, oh yeah, come do this with us, you put in a little money, right. we'll be like the middleman, do you suggest starting with a platform of that? Uh, yeah, that's basically how most people start. Uh, those are types of brokerage companies, mm -hmm. so you pay them like, let's say $6.95. Mm -hmm. uh, Bank of America has a uh, investing division which charges $6.95 okay. for every trade that you do. Mm -hmm. So with that, you need to know how much is it going to take for me to make my money back with minus that, that fee of $6.95. So the smartest way is if you, you don't want to buy a hundred shares of Apple because most likely you probably can't afford it. Right. But if you find an ETF or a mutual fund that has a bunch of companies, including Apple, that cost $40, mm -hmm. that is a better investment than buying the single stock. But we teach all that in the workshop too. So. Okay. And your workshops are made up of you know, small intimate groups or is it a one-on-one -on -one Right, experience? yeah, so we've all been to class seminars, all that stuff. You're drowning in a bunch of people. It's just hard right. to learn or even raise your hand if you have a question. Right. Our workshops are about 10 people max, and it's a very intimate group, like you said, and we just go over the gamut of managing your money, saving, paying off debt, and investing. So um, another thing that, that speaks to me right now is um, student loans. Right. Um, I know I'm in a place right now where student loans are something that just has to be dealt with. Yeah. And luckily I'm in a place where also where they're not in the six figure range. Yeah. Um, where I think a lot of people, especially people who go to private institutions, um, yeah. they end up with over hundreds of thousands of like dollars in student debt. Right. Um, for student debt, is that something that you should defer? Um, for as long as possible or tackle as early as possible like what's your advice in terms of how people should really be approaching loans well see we're almost taught when you go into college you're always going to have student loans right right the average student loan debt here in new york city is thirty six thousand dollars the average person is carrying about thirty six thousand dollars student loan debt okay. try to knock it out as fast as possible gotcha. don't like we're taught like oh when you're 50 years them. old you'll you'll still have student loans no if you're making thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars and your student loan is four $40,000, let's say, that's was just more than your income, right. technically, with the 50, 20, 30, you should be able to pay that off in eight years. Okay. Technically. Okay. And that, in eight years, you're not going to be making $30,000. Uh, hopefully not. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully not. not. But yeah. in this industry, you just never know. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. It was really good sitting down with you. I, I know a lot of people have been struggling with this and will still continue to struggle with it, but at least with the 50, 20, 30, you have some, we have some type of framework to work with. Right. Um, I hope you guys got something impactful, something that you can actually apply to your life, wherever you may be. Um, make sure you come back to Interact because we have a lot coming up next. Go ahead, said bounce.